reporting in general and actually there's real just, there's just going to be like the freaking development league for each espn as it feels like yeah yeah but, know, it's it's sad. When ESPN, yeah, but when mm -hmm. espn come calling how can you say no to that but that's I, i'm not say saying no that? that you know to blame people or not i'm just saying it just kind of sucks that you know daily dot who like you said has been carrying the the, the torch for like the last year Two years, and of, right? and, and of course, yeah. you know, Bright Breitbart have been touching um, some some uh, incredible <laughs> stories. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, you know, you know. I think I think ESPN and uh, maybe some of the traditional sports websites. You know, Turner have shown a lot of interest in getting into esports. I like to see Bleacher Report get involved. Um, you know, that's which like I know the they second. do. They want to too. Yeah, that's, yep. that, that's mm -hmm. like the second biggest site. So I think once ESPN have the uh, competition of like another big site like Bleacher Report. And they're, and they're gunning for, for, to produce the best esports content. I think esports journalism finally gets to a good place, and it's going to be great to have legitimate companies like ESPN, like uh, Turner, uh, you know, spearheading that charge, whereas typically before it's been a bit of an amateurish pursuit. Right. Okay, Moose, thanks for your question. Bye bye. All right, one more. Last one, guys. Zasabi. Zasabi. Hey, Zasabi. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, good. Got a question. You're our last caller, so make it a good oh, one. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> All right. So no here's, pressure. Here's my, wow. here's my question for Richard. Are you still going to keep your finger on the pulse of esports? And would you consider coming back on the show as a guest? Oh, uh, good question. I imagine, good I imagine questions. Uh, in the future, I'm going to have to keep my finger on the pulse of esports. I'm still going to be working in, in, in an esports related venture. Uh, in terms of coming on the show as a guest, Mm -hmm. I am. I imagine that I'm going to be in that sort of um, corporate world of having to get permission. You know, I, sure. I, I, th I think we, so. We be... can't talk about riot, and we can't. <laughs> I'm trying to think of well, the things we're I, not going to do. Here's, here's the thing as well. You know, and look, I'll, I'll actually say this because other people never do, uh, and that is that. Um, you know, like the the the, the, the unfiltered which was like today. I'm having a little bit of fun on Twitter because uh, obviously the morons crawled up the woodwork. This is my last appearance on Unfiltered, so I wanted to keep it unfiltered. I think the mm -hmm. viewers and the people that supported my work and Chris's work and Stephen's work uh, deserve that. Uh, but but ultimately, like I am going to be entering a new phase where talk like this is going to be done. You know, it's uh, it, it's going to have to go on hiatus because of the nature of the position that I'm going to take. So people might say, oh, you've gone corporate, you fucking sold out, you're a little white, you're a little bitch, you're a hypocrite. Whatever people want to say, I'm sure the, the, the there'll actually be some truth to those criticisms. But ultimately, you know, I'm in my 30s. I've done this for a long time. I've been, I've tried to be a, a, a lone voice of sanity in a very fucking insane industry. And uh, this is my, t this is my time to get paid. This is my time to move on to something that's going to be more nourishing and satisfying to me uh, on a, on a, on a, on a uh, career basis. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the prospect of coming back on the show, yeah, but it'll be with a caveat that I'll probably be told to steer away from certain things <laughs> and not say something. <laughs> and that's sure. just what happened. Well, you know, that, yeah. that's just... That's just the reality yeah, it's uh, of, of what's going to happen. So I, I, I wish that wasn't a reality. I wish we existed in a reality where uh, people's opinions uh, were respected, however controversial, however edgy they were. People could debate the opinions, not debate the person, not attach this complete myth of the professionalism discussion where if you say something somebody doesn't like, that immediately makes you unprofessional, not turning up for work and working your hardest and excelling in your role. But unfortunately, this is the society we exist within, and I'll have to start conforming to rules that I've never wanted to conform to in my life, perhaps temporarily, perhaps ongoing. I guess it depends how the job goes. But that's just being real about it and mm -hmm. if people will notice the difference and will notice the change and it's a change that i'll have to make uh but it won't be under duress uh it'll it'll probably be welcome to get away from it like for example um once i start this job the the the, the twitter arguments i mean that's all gonna go that's gonna end uh you know so you, are you gonna be in control of your twitter account once you get when you get uh, this i mean that's that's a very good question I mean, it's been discussed <laughs> maybe i maybe i'm not uh that's oh, honestly true um, and, but, but, but when I interviewed with um, it's quite interesting. So when I, <laughs> when I when I interviewed with ESPN, uh, ESPN made the point, and it, it was an informal interview. It wasn't a formal interview. I must stress that it was just a phone interview. Um, and I, I, I interviewed with ESPN, and uh, they were like, "Look, we've got grave concerns over your Twitter." <laughs> Uh, and I was like, well, why is that? And they're like, well, you say these things. And they reeled off some examples. And I was like, okay, yeah, I suppose that is. Uh, <laughs> like, reeled off the last, like, three freaking years. We're a, we're, a, we're a Disney company. We, we, we certainly don't 
we couldn't have anyone projecting that image. So there would be a chance that uh, we would probably put an intern uh, on your Twitter for a while. And I was kind of like, well, you know, I don't really want to do that. Um, I, I, I don't think uh, just because you pay the bills, you get to uh, dictate uh, how I behave on Twitter. But ultimately, uh, for the right price, <laughs> Yeah, sure. Tell me what to do. You know, fucking address me. Bend over, right? <laughs> like I don't know what the fuck, right? You know what I mean? Uh, for, for the right money and the right opportunity and and and, the, and a chance to be affiliated with something that I believe can be really successful and and, and help my career. Obviously, you've got to you've got to compromise. You've got to compromise. Um, so so, but what, what where it gets interesting is so ESPN lectured me great fucking length um, about. Uh, you know how how important it was that I, I couldn't work for them uh, if my Twitter feed was bad. Well, they recently published an article by someone who you may remember uh, as Go Sick Boy, um, or you maybe remember him as Anne Prague. And this is somebody that pretended <laughs> to be uh, a woman on the internet uh, for a prolonged period of time. Actually, used that fake alias to solicit nudes from female players oh, and wow. female personalities mm -hmm. in the scene. And ESPN have had no problem giving him a space to publish his work or a byline. So I think either that's a case if they're not doing their homework or their priorities are a little bit skewed. Because certainly I wouldn't want to give a platform that big to somebody that's engaged in deplorable behavior like that. So it just goes to show um, every, every time I've gone for a, a, a job interview, everyone's like, you know, we, we love your work. Uh, we, we, we love what you do. There's no denying you're good at what you do. We think you're a great personality, but your social media presence is uh, a, a nightmare. It's a disaster. And I'm like, I just don't get what's so bad about tweeting out. Like if someone attacks me, I don't get what's bad about me attacking them back on a level playing field. I never will understand that, but that's how the corporate world works. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm soon to be assimilated. Well, not unfortunately, because I'm quite looking forward to it, but, but, but the, the old Richard Lewis is going to be assimilated into that corporate world. It's just that simple. Powering down, Fair enough. man. Powering down. All right, thanks for the question, buddy. Yeah, thanks oh. a lot. Take care, dude. What's your last oh. unfiltered statement, Richard? Oh, oh yeah. Last. Oh, my, my, my last unfiltered statement. Uh, I, lo I, I love the show. Um, it's been a, a labor of love sometimes. I, I wish the community were a bit more fucking mature in how they handle it. Like, don't tune into a fucking show called Unfiltered if you don't want to hear unfiltered opinions. Um, but it's been great for my career. Um, it's it's played a huge part in getting to where I am uh, today, and I certainly hope whoever comes on the show uh, and uh, replaces me uh, realizes what a fantastic opportunity it is to work with the likes of Chris and Stephen, and uh, obviously reach uh, the, the the people who are normal and uh, not idiots, uh, of which there are many that do watch this show, and I, I would certainly rank you among them. So thanks very much for asking. All right, thanks, man. Take care, guys. All right, yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right, well, let's. Uh kind of round out the show here and um i'm really disappointed because i was hoping this last episode was just gonna be me ranting about the starcraft community and all the fake people in there and i'm never gonna get the chance now so you, you know, already, just, just... have you not done that already i thought you've already done oh, that no fuck no uh okay so i just okay this is the... okay i'll give cats, you okay right cats okay. cats came out in, in the aftermath of the uh, duncan uh, appearance and we were talking about you know starcraft swirling down the toilet and he was like saying oh you know you what it's you you people who say dead game and all of these memes that are killing starcraft and, and we should all work together and be positive to grow the uh, community this guy was an absolute massive piece of shit this guy was like literally doing every dirty trick in the book he could to leverage his position leverage root pushing people like myself out of the scene when i first came into it because he thought he was a bigger name than me Wait, uh, how, did, how, how did that happen yeah, yeah, that's not, that, that's, what? That, well yeah and, hey look i know you've got to work or how to work in a relationship with this guy uh, but but anyway, this, I this have is, every I, just. I was kicked off of Root. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> like really dumb no. reasons. So I have every I have every reason in the world to hate cats. So I'm I'm not here to defend him. I'm not on Root. I have no affiliation with the team. But I'm curious to how you think that he kicked you out of the scene or pushed you. No, out no, of no. The scene. He, he tried to push me out of the scene when I came in as a journalist. He was one of the few people who, when we got into the land of broken promises thing, he was oh. one of the most folk, okay. you know, beating the drum about it. When I was criticizing Root for doing things such as kicking you, when I wrote a, 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 a piece in defense of you, he went absolutely fucking ham about it and unleashed the dogs of war. In fact, uh, there was a, a chick called Sunset who accused me of like sexually harassing her. I don't even know how you do that over Twitter. 
Um, and, and and she she blocked me immediately, uh, and would then just make all these weird passive. Where I've to... never Re in my life, have, as someone that knows Sunset and Cats, I've never heard of Sunset saying you sexually harassed her. Yeah, like, stalked her and sexually harassed her and all sorts of other crazy shit. And and uh, when, when, was when, when, she, Holy when, when, when she went over, yeah, when she went over and walked on gamers, um, she was repeating the same thing. It was another one of the uh, caveats in the background about why maybe I couldn't work on gamers in the first instance because she'd said all this crazy heinous shit about me. She wrote numerous blogs about me i still don't really know who she is or what she does um yet this is all the shit that she said about me so anyway um and and, and cats obviously didn't just endorse that it was coordinated uh it was designed you know so he wasn't interested in making starcraft a better place when people were out there breaking promises ripping off consumers putting in false kickstarters he actually endorsed all of that and is also <laughs> I don't, what are you talking about wait yeah. what we haven't even gotten had Okay, here's what it sounds here's what it sounds like happened. I'm pretty sure that did you put Katz's fundraiser on the broken promises list? You it was on there. It was on there. The whole the whole house. Yeah, thing. It was definitely on there. Like, I, I think Katz probably, said, probably that, said that was a separate like, article. That was a separate article. Katz probably came into that thread and defended his thing, which I whether he's right or wrong, yeah, I would expect him to do. And then you and then and then you misconstrue that as him trying to no. push you out of the industry. No, like no, 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 no. You can go back and look at his tweets from that fucking time period where he was like basically saying, you know, oh, this guy's not a fucking journalist. You can't listen to him. What the fuck does he know? He's just trying to piggyback on the success of StarCraft, which obviously wasn't true. I came into StarCraft late when everyone was fucking uh, already trying to. Ah, oh, yeah, look, Brood War me. Is that the one with the Zergs? Just trying to get some of that fucking sick StarCraft money, right? So, I, and I didn't do that. Um, and, and, you know, th th this guy did fucking go out and basically was trying to pu push me out. A lot of people did. It wasn't just him. There was a very coordinated effort, you know, from guys like uh, the people over at Evil Geniuses and, and uh, you know, uh, Artosis. And I think even Total Biscuit, John might have uh, had said something about it at the time, saying I was being a little bit hysterical. I don't fucking mind. You know, me and John squashed that beef a long fucking time ago. But there was a lot of fucking pressure on me to push me out the fucking scene. And Katz was fucking loving every second of that. Every time I, I wrote a story about Root, he would come out and be like, well, it's Mr. Journalist guy making shit up again. He, he refused Wait, to. So re you're saying refused. that every single time I'll you the go I will finish the sentence. I will finish the sentence. He, he refused. Uh, he refused to even refer to me by name in an op-ed that he published on the Root website because I was so fucking beneath him. So let's not mm -hmm. pretend this guy was welcoming people with open arms. And again, when you were, when you attack journalists who are trying to expose wrongdoing, you are tacitly endorsing that wrongdoing. You may know. Counter so you're, so I'm just to get this straight. You're saying that the guy who you accused of being a scammer and a rip offer and somebody destroying the scene came out and said negative things about you? That's the accusation? Is I'm just making sure. I never, I never said that. I said that he had failed to. <laughs> I said he failed to deliver promises. I said I found the idea of getting the community to fund a team house unpalatable. Uh, these are. This is pretty much all I said. I, I, I said that he was a hypocrite because he kicked you over uh, alleged racist statements. And yet, when it came to his smite team, he allowed those guys to run a mock, and they were involved in multiple uh, racist inc yeah, incidents. I remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but Jerby in particular was caught saying that yeah. I can't tell the difference between uh, all Asian people, all, all yellow people, I think he might have said. So it was okay for the team that he was hoping was going to be spearheading uh, the most pop a popular new eSport. It was okay for them to be racist, but not for you. Um, so, so again, I pointed out the hypocrisy. Wait, when? Uh, about... Oh, okay. I feel like sources or whatever have been really good for this. I feel like a lot of this is being blown out. When did when did Katz say something about yellow people? No, Katz didn't. Jerby did. Uh, Jerby did. The, one of the uh, Smite players. Katz. I, I kind of remember that time. That was a while yeah, ago. So, but, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. so, so that's what I mean. So let's, again, the, the idea that he's like some guy that's been like, you know, out there like welcoming people in the scene and wants to clean it up, wants to make it a better place. He's just another guy who wanted to preserve the fucking status quo. And then what he said on this stream that he did, he was like, oh, um, you're the reason Tastosis left. And he was like, really pained and fake emotion and all of that shit. He was saying that like people saying dead game is the reason Tastosis left. No, the reason Tastosis left is because the money fucking wasn't coming in at the same level it was. I and let's not pretend. I don't think not pretend. Have, well, for one, they haven't left. Let's not pretend. For, for let's one, not they pretend. haven't left. Well, that, it's Katz's yeah. words, not mine. Okay. okay. Words. I don't think Katz blamed you for Tastosis leaving. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying that. You're really not following the conversation. I'm he not. blamed people saying dead game and memes for them leaving. That's what he did. Okay, he but you're trying out. to make it sound like since you were one of those people that Katz is blaming you no, for... No, I'm not saying that. You're, again, you're... Okay, that was the impression I got. Okay, my bad. So that what, what I'm saying is, 
the reason that Tastos has left uh, was just simply financially based. These guys have done all sorts of shady shit behind the scenes. Again, not to help StarCraft. They've hindered the career of other casters quite deliberately. Those casters know who they are and they're too afraid to speak up about it, but they were getting fucked over. They also like to believe they have some little mafia control hold over Korea and they talk very openly about it and they care so much about StarCraft that they almost didn't do a BlizzCon because they were in an argument over whether or not they got business class seats on a flight. So fuck those guys. These guys are fakers, liars, They and the community fall for it every fucking time. And since I'm very unlikely to have anything more to do with fucking StarCraft, uh, I, I think it's about you know fair that we set the fucking record straight about these people and their motivations. It's the same old shit. They've got a limited skill set. They want to fucking basically take advantage of the last swirls of the StarCraft dream before it goes down the toilet. And then don't worry, they'll jump on whatever Blizzard say, hey, we've got a good fit for you here. They'll go and do that. Right, but don't get sucked in to them posturing about how much they care about the fucking scene and how much they grow it. Yeah, they've done some good stuff, but they've also done a bunch of fucking bad stuff. And and the bad stuff they've done has negatively impacted on the growth of StarCraft. Absolute fact, unequivocal. So there you go. Just wanted to clear that up. Sure. <laughs> okay, as somebody sure. with more, as somebody who knows more about everything that cats, in particular, and probably the other people who've been involved in Free StarCraft than Richard Lewis, I completely and totally disagree with 99% of what he said, but. I mean, like, if we don't source anything, then, I mean, this whole conversation is just kind of here. I did like, source it. Well, he did source a lot of this. Source what? Then. I mean, just... Where are the tweets of Sunset saying that you... Oh, I don't know about right. Sunset part. Yeah, that's Sunset, the, uh, not, the, not, where not like that part. Where is, like, the evidence yeah. that Cass has said... I didn't, that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say she tweeted it out. She tweeted <laughs> out that I was talking her. She said it privately to people to... Well, I mean, I, 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 like, yeah, really want to see it. Because the context is really important for a lot of these things, like... Well, no, what, what, what you're saying is you think I'm a liar, which is fine. Uh, I don't I think you're uh, lying. No, I don't think you're lying. I think you're engaging in like half truths. Like, I really want to see the context of a lot of these things. Like, I know everything that I know a lot about what Katz has done behind the scenes. And for the mo for the most part, like, Katz has been one of the better people in StarCraft, too. Like, there has been a couple things, like, personally, that irked me a little bit. Um, but in terms of, like, being an overall, like, a hugely negative detriment to the scene or a negative impact to the scene, a detriment to the scene, I don't necessarily know didn't, if I could didn't, that. Didn't, didn't use the words hugely detrimental, mm -hmm. but his, his, his words it, on that stream where that we need to be more positive we need to stop with the dead game meme and we need to be more welcoming of people trying to come into starcraft well he wasn't welcoming of new people coming into starcraft that makes well, it you're, but yeah, like, again and again again you just did like a really big like half truth there like cast is pretty welcoming to everybody that's been to starcraft now has he generally been yes mm -hmm. to you who accused mm. him of being a snake in the grass and being like one of the worst people in esports and scamming? I mean, again, again, no, yeah, I probably not that so welcoming. I mean, you know what? Like, Steven, you're gonna have to source that because I didn't say any of those things. So what you're doing now is lie, you see. Well, so, the, so I, I think okay, well, good, both of you guys, both of you guys. Animate. Okay, okay. So here's the thing. Like, Stephen, generally, cats for the community, StarCraft community, and and trying to welcome people and picking up players. I mean, Root's always been like that team that people you know, develop and, and then they jump to some bigger team. Okay. Like, so generally a lot of things that, that, that Katz has done has definitely been positive for the StarCraft 2 community. No question. Now with Richard, he wrote an article that were pointing out things that, I mean, and he sourced them in articles that, you know, were true at the moment at the time, you know, and, and some of it had to do with the whole crowdfunding. I believe that's what it kind of revolved around. And then a lot of the promises that were made or, were some of the milestones and things like that that were promised. And, you know, that was just during the time, the whole broken promises, right? And that was one of the things that was happening. So, yeah, y'all's first interaction was definitely in in a, in the context of, you know, you, you know, attacking him for, you know, for something. Yeah, and, that, he, and that's he, like... He got involved when I was yeah. talking about other shit, like the EG stuff. Uh, he, went out and, he, he went out and batted for, you know, Pizza GG and all of that gibberish. He didn't have to. He didn't have to attack me to do it, but he did, and he's never missed an opportunity. So again, he's he's a hypocrite. That's that's my point. That these people, you know, he he, he wasn't he wasn't out there using his position as the supposed nice guy of uh, StarCraft uh, to hold people accountable for breaking promises for people that pay money to deliver on these promises. I had to do that. And I was, I, was, I, was, I was made a pariah for it for the longest period of time. Fortunately, the community that time embraced it. They're, they're, they're doing it less now because obviously they're massively insecure that the game's going to die, which it is. Um, and because of that, they're like, oh, they're, they're all panicking. So, and, and, and we've got to shut out the facts. La, 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 this isn't happening. My ladder position matters. La, 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 la. You know, like that's, that's what's happening right now with the community. So they're getting sucked into it all again. I'm, uh, I'm advising extreme caution about trusting any of these people because you're not privy to the same level of information I am about these people. You don't know how these people behave behind closed doors. You don't know what kind of game they run. 
uh, in the background. And th- th- trust me, they run a lot of fucking game and they say one thing and their actions do another. So that's just the fucking reality of it. So, you know, if you want, if you want to, if you want to believe that it's like, you know, oh, these guys are so positive and we should all support them. Again, they're just milking you for more cash before the fucking lights get turned out. You know what I mean? All right. Well, this 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 topic. Well, I mean, this section is your last topic, you know, for the show. So, right? Any anything else you want to bring up? Um. I mean, this I'm is this is literally the last moment of unfiltered Richard. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> so. No, no. I, I, I think I think I, pretty, I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff, you know. Like, well, the bottom line is like just to the StarCraft community in general, there there isn't one community that has been took advantage of more than I've worked with in esports or gaming. I have Ooh. never seen a bigger collection Wait. of sort of like. Uh, you know, I don't know what to call them, Come but like, when it comes to like I- I- leveraging goodwill, when, when it when it comes to leveraging goodwill, I've mm. never seen a community more exploited and given so little in return like, uh, and treated with such disdain. Like, what do you mean? Like, I, I mean, give me an example of that because you know, obviously, I'm a product of that that community, right? And I mean, a lot of what I where I am now would not have been, you know, that, that wouldn't have happened without goodwill in that community. So like, what do you mean by that? Are you just talking about casters? Or are you talking about talking about everything? I'm talking about every fucking failed Kickstarter. I'm talking about organizations running fucking, uh, you know, advertising campaigns where they take mm-hmm. the money up front. And then they oh, you're talking about off. just like from the yeah, just from the, the the community the itself. You mean like, from the community? I'm talking itself. about barefaced lies and the presentation of personas where it's like, ha ha ha, we are nice people, and then behind the scenes, they're just some of the most treacherous, backstabbing, foul people to work with. So <laughs> Jesus, insecure. Man. So insecure in their own position that they would fuck good, hardworking talent out of uh, job prospects and opportunities. We talked. We started the the show well very early on in the show. We started talking about rates and whether or not there was competition yeah. between casters. Right. Never has it been so vicious in StarCraft. Never have uh, people uh, actually held such fucking dominion because of their status. Tastos has absolutely abused their position. Uh, to, as, as the top names in StarCraft talent for a long, long time. And you had to basically pay fealty if you wanted to get anywhere as a fucking Okay, guy. so let's... let's, let's okay. And that's undeniably true. And everyone knows what I'm saying and the business knows what I'm saying is true. Okay, so let's just talk about a l- little bit more about that. I mean, isn't that just market though? Right? I mean, it's, it's the same thing here right, where it's market, just... Hey, there's yeah. a market for me right now. There's a market for Thorin right now. Yeah. I'm not fucking anyone out of jobs. I've just talked about how actively I'm not. I, I in fact made the point uh, just recently with MLG, if there was any way we could get Blue, uh, to, who's a young and upcoming cast who's just signed the ESL, get him to the major. But how, I, is he, I, I, how, how are they fucking them out of jobs when the events want them over everybody? No, 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 Again, what they're saying is we won't work with certain people. So if you want us, you don't, you can't hire them. That's different. Well, for a while, they were only working with each other. So, I mean, who, like... Right? Yeah. I mean, they were, they but, were, but I'm, like I'm I said. About as, as, as events have grown and other talent hires were in, especially in Korea, there'll, there'll be people who'll come forward in a year or two. Like I said, when, when StarCraft's finally, the final nail's in the coffin, there'll be a bunch of fucking stories come out about it and it'll be Richard Lewis was right again. Like, you know, I don't, I don't want to throw anyone under the fucking bus. I talk to a lot of people and a lot of people have been fucking absolutely wrecked by some of the biggest names in StarCraft who have just literally fucking mined it for profit. All right, that's it. And then people can people can fucking say, oh, you know, you, you had nothing to do with our community. Uh, out of the people that matter in, in, in StarCraft, the people that actually make a talent contribution, they all fucking respect me and what I do. Uh, so I'm all right. I don't go fuck if popular opinion's not with me because the people who matter actually know what I'm saying is right. So I don't give a fuck. But the, the, the bottom line on, on, on this is, if the StarCraft community is gonna go back to the old ways and get fucking roped in again, then you're going to get, trust me, you're going to get fleeced one big time, right? You get, there's going to be another big fleecing coming, another wave of fleecing before this game dies. And I'm just telling people, watch out, because it's coming. And when it comes, don't be fucking surprised when it's like, oh, but two years later, StarCraft doesn't exist anymore. And I'm still waiting for that video they promised they make. Yeah, g- good for you guys. You'll have done it to yourself. No community has been fucked over as much, so you should all be wise to it by now. Well, I, I think the community right now is a totally different environment than before. <laughs> yeah, I think for whatever reason, it, it doesn't seem to be quite like that anymore. Just from the standpoint of a blizzard plus a lot of the people that are in, in the community, whether they've changed or whatnot. But, um, you know, 
It's like, cool, you know, and, all this, and all this to, hey, let's all, let's all make a pinky promise, a pinky swear, not to say mm-hmm. dead game, and the game will suddenly become popular. <laughs> it's mean, not, well, it's never going to become super that, popular that, again, okay? Really let's just, the best that we it's... Can with these incredible minds that have, like, shaped StarCraft and have contributed so much, their solution is pinky promise, don't say dead game. That's it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm fucking well, sold. These people know what I'm <laughs> talking about. Here's a, but, I mean, the thing is, is dead game is, I don't, you know, it's... It's it's obviously an, an, a meme at this point, but you know, Starcraft will never be completely dead. I mean, that's just as long. I'm telling you, as long as Mike Morheim is there, this Starcraft will never be completely dead. And yeah, it's uh, not going to be completely dead. It's just going to be. It's not going to grow. It, it might not grow. It's, it's going to be largely relevant within esports. That's the that's the sad reality. You know, and I and I, I say yeah, that as somebody that you know, even though I've never played StarCraft, I used to love working in the community. I used to love working in the scene. I used to love meeting mm-hmm. the people, interviewing the players, mm-hmm. making a contribution that way. I, I I got my first hosting gig, I think, in a StarCraft event. Yeah. So I I, I I I always had a lot of love for the community, but just lately, like these guys are fucking slipping. It's slipping, Jimmy. Like these guys have fucking gone back to their fucking old ways uh, of just being sucked in by bullshit, and they can't even take the fucking reality that their game is swirling down the toilet and. That maybe the WCS changes are, are, are bad or they came too late. They can't, they've become so fragile because they understand the reality. They can't accept hearing the reality. And, and the minute that happens, the minute you let your guard down, that's when these people well, who whisper about how they have the solutions and, and support my stream and support this and say this and let's pretend the game isn't dead so I can maybe pull in a few more sponsors. That's when they get taken advantage of. Meanwhile, people who tell it straight, like Thorin, yeah, y- y'all attacking him and saying <laughs> that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Thorin the, the Starcraft. I, I mean, okay, he, so... He got, Thorin, who this... made like 400 pieces of Starcraft content, was crying that people wouldn't give him interviews. I Like, I don't know no, he said he's again. You, you, you did that thing. I'm not you misconstruing, do it. dog. I read the tweet. Yeah, he was no, saying that when I was new with Starcraft, yeah, no one gave me any kind of. That's bullshit, yeah. dude. That isn't bullshit. That is exactly how it went down. It's 100 bullshit. Who said no to Thorin? What he had access to, like everyone. He put how much Starcraft. Uh, on? Well, well, he might not have had access so, to so, everybody. So, 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 so I, again, I, I guess you were there, Stephen. I guess you. Were I mean, he's floating like some. I mean, I was there when Thorin made that tweet bragging about how he made like 400. How you can't have your cake and eat it too. What did you make a ton of really good Starcraft content? involving a every started, community it, it, figure it, it, or did you get shunned by community figures like days. you can't have a both ways and again you've been intellectually dishonest i know when i first started in starcraft i struggled to get interviews as well people didn't want to do interviews with me people were like who the fuck are you and then after i started writing about you know unpopular things and saying yeah maybe we shouldn't support papa john's maybe that's not a good company to support yeah when i started writing stuff like that i got blacklisted <laughs> but i got blacklisted by team liquid i got blacklisted by eg so again, I know these things happened. You obviously know more about it than me and Duncan, who were doing that job. I mean, wait, so, your whole point on not supporting Papa John's was that because the CEO had a particular position on like a political issue that we should shun them as a sponsor from esports. I mean, like I, I don't I feel like all of these examples are like really kind of being uh, yeah. To make a point. No, I, 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 you're right, and I, I, I think, I think had you been around when apartheid was a thing, I, I think you probably <laughs> oh my god, that as well, right? Like, I mean, come on, what the fuck? Like, what if they, you have a particular? <laughs> Something you, you, Who, you what, I'm curious. What's an example of some good? What's some example of some good figures in uh, StarCraft two that you think were good for the game? I'm curious. Good for the game? Sure. Uh, Stefano, inarguably in control, inarguably. And here's the thing: Jeff was in a difficult position because EG uh, was, um, you know, e- EG was blacklisting me, but Jeff never really sort of endorsed that. Jeff was always like, kind of, yeah, I'd like to do interviews with. Him. I think you're a cool guy. So J- Jeff's a great guy. I think hugely entertaining. Um, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd say the same about you. I, th- I think you were like one of the first professional streamers. You did a lot of positive yeah, stuff. Yeah, besides, besides me, I, think I mean, TLO, what about Stefano and the fourteen-year-old girl thing? What about Stefano and the? Um, I, 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 I think it's unfortunate that he said something while somebody else was streaming and got caught out for it. You know, and, and look, and, and again, it's not all bad. Obviously, Tastosis, they were the sort of uh, benchmark uh, for casting duos. You know, do we have an Anderson similar if a Tastosis doesn't exist? Probably he's not, right? So I can I can see the good and the bad. But the, the point is, you know, and obviously what Total Biscuit did, I, I think unprecedented in the space, was one of the first people that really pushed for fucking transparency, was always transparent in everything he did. And yeah, he was he was vocal and opinionated, as is his right to be. And we didn't always agree and get along with it. But fuck, you know, like I respect his opinion and I respect what he did. He put his money where his mouth is. He didn't need to be involved in esports, let alone StarCraft. And yet he put his fucking money into it. So you don't so, think there's any valid, you don't think there's any valid 
like opinion on the side that like maybe relentless negativity isn't necessarily the way to go forward for a game like no, I, I agree I, that I, I, it would be nice because now I'm being accused of endorsing statutory rape uh, saying that you've had sex with <laughs> no. somebody saying that you've had Nobody's sex with somebody on a stream that. isn't the same as actually having sex I'll prove it I just fucked Jennifer Aniston didn't happen there you go okay point proven uh it's good to, again morons to try and try and keep up yeah it, so, it's not um, like the problem is a lot like I feel like you're taking like little quips and quips and then you're like you're making these hugely absurd generalizations so like i don't think that it's necessarily i, I can't think of anyone thing. else who's ever done that steven i feel, i feel like for the starcraft community i don't think that it's necessarily a negative thing to not want people to constantly and relentlessly shit on your game i think that that's an okay feeling like do we need to be honest about like where the state of starcraft is at yeah sure but that doesn't mean that it has to be a relentless stream of shitting on the game i think that that's like the line that people were trying to draw do you disagree with that um, I, I look. I think you. I, I think people are entitled to speak openly uh, about the state of the game and what they think it's in. And I don't think. Okay, but you that... didn't answer my question. Do you, do you think question. that it's do you think that it's okay to maybe say that it's not a good thing for the game to have people relentlessly shitting on it constantly? Do you think that? What's well, about okay one of the things like it's when when you've said it once? Like, it, 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 I guess what he's trying to say is like, is it? Is it actually good to just like, continue the saying problem. the same thing over it's, and over again? Like, that's the problem. Like, there were a few yeah. people, like, for the most part, like, I'm making a, a bit of an assumption here, but I think for the most part, most of the StarCraft Reddit would say that, like, it was an okay thing when I tried to reveal a lot of the problems with StarCraft, and that a lot of the people that hopped onto that, it was an okay thing. It wasn't well, okay. It was a great like, thing. It was a great yeah, thing. Yeah, but a lot of people don't it. like it when people constantly come and just say, like, dead game, dead game, dead game, or, like, when Thorin went on his huge fucking Twitter escapade shitting on every single person in the StarCraft community, and then, you know, like, the constant streams of, like, dead game, dead game, dead game. Don't you think it's okay for people to be of the opinion that maybe something like that really doesn't contribute anything positive whatsoever i think you can say that i think when you pedal that it's the answer to fixing the problems i think that's retarded okay yeah i don't i'm not i'm not saying that i'm just saying that you're making the, the 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 argument that you're giving it you're making it sound like every single person that was saying hey can we cut it out with the massive dead game spam you're making it sound like every single one of those people was just just a disingenuous con man looking to milk the game for some money like that's the impression that i got at it's least it's not least. entirely wrong i not entirely wrong Wow. Like, what does it matter? What okay. does it matter if people who play the fucking game want to say it's a dead game? What What does it matter if actual actually the fan base of StarCraft is self-aware enough? We just enough? literally like an hour ago, we just said that Nade Shot moving over to the MLG platform was enough to tank almost the entire game of Call of Duty because he brought everyone else with him. You don't think yeah. that community members might be a little bit influential when it comes to how the community views itself? Like, I mean, we both. Or do do you not do you disagree with that? I, I do. I, I think Nade Shot's one of the most influential esports uh, uh, figures of all time. I think uh, a bunch okay, so of then you uh, agree on that, a forum like, don't have the so same you, Okay, but like large community figures do, right? So when you get large community people from other communities, i.e. Thorin on Twitter, shitting on every single person in a community, you don't think that it might be reasonable that some people would be of the opinion that that kind of a thing is a negative thing for, uh... for that community? Like, no, again, I don't think Thorin makes any fucking difference, as uh, as evidenced by the reaction. Uh, you know, it's not like anyone listened to what he had to say, which is part of the problem. What, what did he have to say that was constructive? All I, all I saw was him saying that pretty much every single person involved in StarCraft II was a huge piece of shit. People that I personally would stake my reputation on, like Nathanius or Rotterdam, like have they had a few problems in the past? Like, I, 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 didn't see what, I didn't see what Duncan said about Nathanius. I, I, I don't know that, and you know what I like, you know what I like Does anybody want to link specific tweets? I'm not going to go back and dig through, but like it was pretty much at every single Starker person. That's why the community had such a huge, why they were such a huge uproar. It's not like Thorin just tweeted like, "Hey, I think that some people in Starcraft." Well, are really actually, it was, like, well, it was more. Chronology's a little off because it was just about what he said on the show to begin with. No, it what? No, no it, it started with the no, tweets. It started with the tweets, Rich. That, sure. That's, that's the only reason the topic made the, the show. The, the, the Reddit threads that cr cropped up were not about yeah. his well, Twitter. Yeah, well, the the Twitter reason the reason the topic was even on the show is because of the tweets. So there there was it was about the Stephen. It started with it with a tweet about Stephen Stephen's article, just basically saying it was good, you know, and then and then you know. Little comments happened from there, and then it just turned out to basically SC2 community versus Thor, and, and everybody chiming in, and that that I mean, that that kind of started. Start the but, the tweets now, so I can I can debate yeah. the individual merits of the yeah. Tweets, I don't I don't so remember so. him attacking Nathanius and Rotterdam like personally or anything like that. Oh, but but, but definitely know. arguing, I definitely know. arguing I about this. it. I remember this. I remember yeah. this now, right? So yeah, right. Nathanius, uh, I believe, called uh, an author of an article. 
Uh, a so, shitter. Yeah, so Nathaniel yeah. made a mistake here. It was a big fuck up, but it was pretty yeah. fucking obvious why that fuck up occurred, and that was ESPN's fault 100%. ESPN did a disgustingly fucking clickbait fucking tweet. Oh, and yeah, yeah, was, yeah. And yeah, if fucking yeah, okay, Thorne yeah, had any yeah, fucking yeah, integrity, yeah. you would have called ESPN out on that instead of fucking yeah, Nathaniel. Yeah, I remember. He definitely ESPN, just call out ESPN. ESPN. That's right, what it okay, was. Okay, good. That's fine, because mm -hmm. ESPN fucked the author of that article hardcore with that fucking tagline. Like, yeah, 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 that was absolutely. 100%. Did Nathaniel fuck up a little bit in that tweet? Oh, yeah, he definitely did and, I, and yeah. later he yeah because he, 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 called, he called the guy who wrote the article a uh, shit yeah, and then yeah, he admitted he did. hadn't even read the article sure sure he did yeah, but that, yeah. but okay, that I was 100 percent on e, or like 99 percent on espn for that horrible fucking tweet that they yeah did yeah absolutely absolutely so why who are we criticizing here espn right so it's not it's not duncan's fault well that yeah, that no, i'm not saying it's not but like this like, i didn't see I didn't see any tweets where he called Nathaniel's old boys club. I think that would be patently absurd, and I would definitely disagree if Duncan did say that. Um, you know, but like at, at the end of the day, um, I mean, fuck, like he's he, he's right to call him out for that. Uh, journalists get a lot of fucking shit, and sometimes like I say I don't I don't pick my headlines. You know, and I'm a senior writer, and I don't get to pick the headline that it uses. And obviously, sometimes editors might want a more enticing headline. Oh, clickbait well, is is their job is to to make yeah, exactly. clickbait. We've got to generate clicks. People but it was clickbait like it's exclusively a bad thing, and that people don't even know how to quantify clickbait. Because again, Pete, everyone's an expert on journalism, except when it comes to actually doing journalism. When it's talking about journalism, everyone knows about it. It's actually going out there and doing it. No one knows what the. Well, no wasn't a, what it wasn't the aspect. it wasn't the journalism aspect. It was it wasn't the so, journalistic part of it. It was so, the marketing so, part of it that was. Yeah, no, 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 the but issue. The, the called the author a share, so that's a problem. They've got, you can't go doing that. What? Right? Again, right. think about this, right? So if, if if we're talking about how it's wrong for like CEOs and people of influence to go off, and like it's wrong for Gabe Newell to call uh, fucking too good an ass, why is it okay for a prominent caster then to call a journalist a fucking shitter just for doing his job? Why is that okay? Are, are we making I'm, the comparison I'm, I'm, right now of Gabe Newell, the CEO of, of dude, fucking Valve, coming out and making it? Listen, you can laugh over what I'm saying all you want. But no, I mean, like, when you can keep doing it. But here's the thing. You always go from fucking zero to 100. Every analogy you make. You say like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously it's bad that he did that because what if you murdered someone and then, and, and, and you go immediately to fucking 100 to make your point. You use hyperbole and extremes to make your points all of the time. So what you're saying is Gabe Newell, a public figure, can't be compared to a lesser public figure. So you can't, again, you're trying to have your cake and eat it. You do this all the time when you debate. You, 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 oh boy, now we're gonna get into the Oh you boy, here we go. Here we go. Of a multi million dollar, of a multi hundred million dollar, multi billion dollar company. Again, Do you think the CEO of like, a multi whatever million dollar company should be a little bit more diligent when he makes public statements concerning his specific talent than a caster talking about like an article for like esports? Yeah, I think that there's follow, a bit of a difference. Let's there. follow. I mean. Let's follow your logic. Okay. <laughs> what you're saying is a public figure of influence criticizing somebody in a way that could damage their job or could be perceived as unprofessional, uh, it, it shouldn't be happening, right? Agreed? That's the essence of the Gabe Newell thing. Yes? Is that a fair summary? Um, yeah, sure. Fair summary. Okay, now we apply it to Nathanius. Exact same thing applies. So. Yep. I, again, I, I, but I, 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 I never defended Nathaniel's action. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah, not saying you do. I'm not, I'm yeah, not you definitely said it was wrong. What I'm saying is you're, you're unwilling to criticize Nathaniel's actions. I'm not. I said Nathaniel's No, he said he, said, did wrong. Wrong. He said he did it wrong. He said he did it wrong. He said he did it wrong. I said he made a mistake, yeah. But here he, 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 you're saying it's not comparable. And it, it clearly is. Now, what I'm saying I, is... I just don't understand the comparison. I'm not defending Nathaniel's. I never said that Nathaniel's was right in his criticism of... Here's the comparison. That, right, young journalists, people who are out there trying to put, get their content out there, get it noticed. What always happens is that, first of all, the guilty always criticize it first. The people who know that there's a great, at least a grain of truth to it, they always come out and shit on it. Then you get prominent figures, shit on it, players. What casters, are we even talking about right now? What are we talking about in reference to right now? Shit always come out and shit on it. What are we... Because Nathanius did that and Duncan criticized it, and then people criticized Duncan for shitting on Nathanius. Wait, why That's... do you think why do you think Nathanius first of all, people didn't shit on Duncan for criticizing Nathanius? They shitted on Duncan for shitting on the entire StarCraft 2 community because he called it a uh, ton uh, of different which, which you listed an I example, don't... which is why we have the tweet in front of us. Okay, but you that was just but that was just one example. That was just one example, okay? I, I'm I'm not defending what Nathanius did. Okay, I'm not defending what Nathanius did. Can we we are we're there, right? I think right, Nathanius yeah, absolutely. Okay? absolutely. So why do you think Nathanius tweeted what he tweeted? Because I don't think you understand this. Why do you think Nathanius made the tweet? Because 
because there's an ounce of truth to it and he was scared because he doesn't want anyone to say anything negative about StarCraft or what? Why, yeah. do you, why do you think Nathanius? Okay, you're wrong. The reason why Nathanius tweeted what he tweeted was because ESPN included a tagline that really yeah. didn't even, in, in, like, was even part of the article that made it sound like the article was essentially he saying... He called Starcraft the author a shitter. He called the, he called the author a shitter. There's no need okay, to do sure, that. Okay, sure, he did. Because yeah, he thought he was the person that wrote the tagline. Yeah, because That's he, why. he completely, because mm. he fucked up and he assumed that the clickbaity autistic shit that ESPN tweeted had anything to do with the article, which was his mistake, because ESPN did a hack job on that tweet, Right. You want to talk about fucking journalism or whatever? Like this is fucking. Yeah, that's yeah. marketing. That's Absolutely. not even journalism. That's fucking it's marketing. It's not marketing. It's bad. I it's agree with you. Yes, yes, so yes but I'm just saying. So it's Nathaniel's not fucked up. Journalism. Nathaniel's fucked up. Okay, I'm still saying Nathaniel's fucked up. But to try to make this into like, well, Nathaniel's tweeted this thing because he's scared that Starcraft is dead. Blah 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 blah. No, of course not. He didn't tweet it because of all the whatever other bullshit like you think he's thinking. He tweeted it because the article looked really fucking bad from the ESPN tweet. End of story. Was, I almost tweeted the same thing. It was, was also really an article. It was also an article that was critical of Starcraft and Starcraft's future. Yeah, yeah but everybody, but after right. reading it afterwards, what my, people thought that what the article was fine. Most people my thought the article was fine after... Imagine if ESPN had put out a positive article saying, hey, it's the second coming of Starcraft, it's going to be big again, and they used some bullshit clickbaity title like the second coming of Starcraft, and it was the same author. Do you th would any of you come out and say, oh my God, what a clickbait Wait, tweet? Wait, so you think that people that work in the industry are going to be a little bit more defensive about an article that is harshly critical of their industry than one that praises it? No way. Uh, you really think so? Right. No way. Hold Starcraft on. Starcraft is not the esports <laughs> industry. Starcraft is a It's facet. not about being the esports industry. I'm just saying that if you would have put out, if I would have put out an article right now that said, Richard Lewis is a huge piece of shit and he raped 17 women, okay? Let's say I put that article Again, you've gone to hyperbole and explain. <laughs> I thought we couldn't do that. I thought we couldn't okay? do that, Steve. No, 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 I thought we had to in the realms of you, before you were trying to say you no stop okay i'm not gonna say that gabe newen or gabe newell has the same level of responsibility to a community as nathanius does because being the ceo of a company versus being talent of like the cast for the fucking game are two totally different things okay right now the comparison i'm making is that if i were to put in an article that's negative about something versus the article that's positive about something it's much more likely that if it's a negative article if the, if the information is wrong that you're going to have a much more adverse reaction to the negative article than the positive article so, what was the information in the article wrong? It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, if I were to post it, if I were to make an article saying something like, "Oh, Richard uh, Lewis has been the best person," and I even heard that he contributed five thousand dollars to charity, blah blah blah, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get on Twitter and start being like, "This is absolutely." Yeah, but that would be true. about me specifically as a person. Okay, but that would be about me. I'm saying that if it was factually incorrect, you would, you probably wouldn't get on Twitter and be like, "This is absolutely wrong. Right. I did not donate five thousand dollars." The wasn't about Nathanius. It was about Starcraft. Okay, but it, but if it's a negative thing pertaining to the industry that you work in and it's wrong, there's a much higher chance that the person is going to. He didn't even read the article and admit that. He didn't. So, but the, did you see the? So how did he know it's wrong? Been, Steven, you no, I already told you, brother. You you I nuts. told you that he fucked up in the response, but the tweet from the e what, 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 can somebody link to ESPN Twitter? The tweet from ESPN literally said like, <laughs> "Who is going to replace uh, Flash as the next Starcraft yeah, talent?" Yeah, nobody. Point, something. Yeah, and no, said, nobody. Yeah, and it was yeah. like the worst fucking clickbaity tweet, and it made it sound like, "Oh, this game is 100 percent fucking dead." It's the worst fucking thing. Obviously, people are going to have that kind of reaction to that tweet. Anybody with like an ounce of common sense would know that that a person so who is working in the industry is going to have a hugely negative reaction to a tweet like that even I without didn't, reading the I, article I, didn't the industry. I thought You're it was not, a perfectly good article, <laughs> the article was fine, but we're talking <laughs> about the tweet not the article and most rich. of the people that read it afterwards said even the thing included said that the article was fine nobody had a problem with the article the problem yeah. was with the tweet uh, you've, thank you we've done it we've got there so why did they have that weird knee-jerk reaction why and, again? Wait, yeah. you're asking the no, most. No, no, why did they? Horror, why did a bunch of people horror, working with Starcraft have a strange knee-jerk reaction it's that somebody tweeted something? Yeah. Really oh, one at a time. This one at a time. Hold on. Okay, Rich. Okay, the Rich is it. Rich, go. And, I'm, and, I'm, and it underlines my point exactly. So you got there for me. Thank you. And yeah, that but is you're that. Wait, 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 wait. It's a horrible point. thing. Hold on, it's hold on. Every hold on. Respond the same. If you tweet something. Hold on, hold on, Stephen. Hold on, hold on. The rhetorical point is that. It was critical of StarCraft, so obviously, unleash the dogs of war. We've all got to come out and defend StarCraft because we're all insecure about the future of StarCraft. That's the Pretty only reason. Pretty sure if you made a similar yeah. point about Hearthstone, CSGO, or fucking Dota 2, or League of Legends, people would do it the is, exact fucking It is a natural thing. reaction. It's come on. It's, it's, it's a, a natural, natural reaction. reaction to, it's Anybody like your territory. Yes. I've written I've written things critical of uh, CS:GO, and I can't think of uh, where industry figures have come out and said, "No, everything's fine." <laughs> oh, please. Please don't take me. my my last few months of a valid paycheck away. I've never seen that. Never seen <laughs> oh, that. Gosh. So. 
Oh yeah, sorry, I'm just speaking from experience. No, but that's one of those things. No, but probably not but, a serious esports title. I haven't written something about. I mean, how so, much critical stuff have you written versus in, about CS:GO versus Starcraft? I only you're like real fast. fast. You're real fast. Listen, if, 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 can you imagine if Valve? There has to be dissenting of you too. Or if Riot yeah. would have pulled the same thing that Valve would have pulled in terms of that whole clusterfuck that was the Shanghai Majors, I feel like you would have been writing article after article, scathing right about that. But when Valve does it, your Twitter was completely fucking silent, except for talking about two people that brought you up in like some tangentially related way. Like, are you talking about criticizing Valve for something that the entire fucking community already agrees on? Of course there's not gonna be a huge outcry and reaction to that. If you're talking about like, like if I were to go right now and write an article about how I think that uh, the CSGO time between mission packs is too long and be like, well, look, I wrote this scathing article about Valve and nobody came out and critiqued me for it. No fucking shit. The entire fucking community agrees with it. Can you, what articles have you written about CSGO? And actually, no, there were people that had a really bad reaction to some of the things you wrote for CSGO. When you outed those players as fixing matches there were a ton of people that said that what you did was wrong and that you destroyed those players how many how many how many how many, wait, wait, how wait, many wait. were credible leading industry figures in the csgo space i don't i don't follow it close enough to know I don't exactly know. It, it, there was exactly one and it's stretching it's stretching the definition of breaking point because it was kelly milkies <laughs> Okay, Jeez. So, Jeez. Yeah, rich. Just, just the point, right? rich. Oh, okay, so how God. many CSGO articles have you written that have been like highly critical and scathing of like Dude, where the community I is been... actually torn, where the community is actually torn and it's actually a controversial but opinion? I, I could like, link hey, you, I could link you to half a dozen articles almost immediately that I've written during the development of CSGO saying that I think we're going to have to accept it's never going to be the game that we want it to be, right? And at no point did industry figures come out and attack me. In fact, Valve read those articles and mentioned the fact that they'd read those articles to me at an event where Valve were attending and I was working. So again, the the, the, the so the you reason... wrote an article in the in the beginning of CS:GO saying that CS:GO was being no, I, I've criticized that... it over the no course way. of its development. No Absolutely. way. Absolutely, because no, the way you make something no. better is by criticizing. He wrote something. Uh, you wrote something super early on, which I, I remember that article. It was super early. Anybody, the only positive opinions it's, that ever. I remember that article. It's when Go launched. Everybody hated it. No, no I, 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 I criticized it a lot more recently than that. In fact, go over to the Daily Dot and you can type this in because this one just popped into my head. Uh, why we shouldn't be surprised by the vacuuming, which was when two uh, high, relatively high level professional players got vacked in there is a criticism of the professional scene saying that it's been uh, po pro uh, populated by cheaters at the highest level of the game ever since Counter-Strike 1.6 and beyond. Uh, and that actually w w we're playing catch up uh, when it comes to anti-cheat measures. And this is just the way it's always going to have to be in unless Valve and, and some other companies do something incredibly drastically different. That's like within the last 12 months, I believe. Okay, uh, so, so you wrote so an article criticizing that. And, you understand and, why these, and, things are, these aren't controversial issues? I'm not trying to degrade your work, but it's I'm saying not like, these are things. controversial issue to the say that they might be professional actors in Counter Strike. Ask Lycan if it's not a controversial issue, but it fucking ruined Lycan in the Counter Strike Wait, community. Wait, what's not a controversial so issue? Clearly, the, the 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 fact that there might be professional players actually cheating. So I wrote that article mm -hmm. just recently. It's within recent memory. Right, and and that's not only criticizing that strikes to the core of what the scene is about. Did anyone in the fucking scene, at an industry level, did any top level commentator, tournament organizer, did anyone come and attack me for that article? Absolutely not. So your point is wrong. Well, I have it's... now demonstrated it to be wrong. I've demonstrated. Many times <laughs> well, okay, so, so like, writing like, writing a single right? dissenting wrote, writing a single article dissenting article. You wrote an article criticizing the VAC system after a bunch of players have been called again, the you, and you, nobody you, stepped you, up and talked. You criticize Trump like, because you no debate way. the same what way. You, you debate the same no way. As way. Oh wow, <laughs> that's a button <laughs> press. That is like, oh boy, that is that is. Okay, so let's follow the timeline here. No, no, this is some of the bravest stuff I've ever heard. So a bunch of players get banned for cheating. You write an article saying, hey guys, there's a bunch of players cheating, and no yeah. major industry figurehead comes out and talks in, in contradiction to that? Hmm, that's pretty great. That's quite the fucking... Uh, do you remember how everyone that's defended matchfixing in StarCraft? Do you remember how everyone defended matchfixing in StarCraft? Defended matchfixing in StarCraft? No. 
Oh, let's give everyone the benefit of the doubt, guys. Oh, the game, the game. They would never. Wait, when who defended? Would match never wait, match fixing. Defended match fixing or didn't like the match fixing? Match fixing. Which one? What? Are, what are you, yeah. What are you? Which one are you talking about? Three figures during a time when we knew there was something suspect in StarCraft. We knew there was these weird results. We knew there was betting patterns going on. We knew there was bullshit going on in Korea. Industry figures, high-ranking industry figures came out and we're like oh let's not panic guys and let's not talk about it and let's not debate it and let's give everyone the benefit of the doubt that actually happened can you point it to industry happen? figures can I'll you point finish. to industry figures in that go look on uh, the starcraft reddit from that time i believe hopbit uh, did it i, I don't know who, who else did okay uh, so, you're, so, you're so gonna tell me that if i go to see and go high level industry figures right came out and said let's fucking pretend that it's not happening and we don't know what's going on and blah blah, blah and trying to make all these excuses that no industry figure did that over the i buy power match fixing not one not one industry figure did that like so first of all milkies nobody, she doesn't count so nobody and, and, defended and, and, starcraft match fixers when so people when you just say, making accusations when you say then, yeah of course when you say that you know oh it's so brave to write an article about how players at the highest level are cheating it is actually brave to say that it's a hugely controversial thing to say it triggers people like no fucking end in almost any other scene and it it got people so triggered with lichen saying it because people didn't feel he had the credibility that you know there's a good chance he'll, he'll never do anything meaningful in counter-strike again because people will not forget about it now the like a situation is so different he, How is it he literally came out and said people are cheating at the highest level i said it in an article statement. it's exactly he's an outsider he made a generalized statement he, he wasn't responding if like if Lycan, he, if Lycan would have said something a lot more pointed or a lot more specific in reference to something like you well, writing an could article source after things, people yeah. busted for cheating there's a huge you're really comparing your i said it was still going on and that people were still doing it. Okay, but again, in the happen. context of when you no wrote your industry article, figure attacked me for breaking that story. So again, I, I don't know. I don't know how much more I can do. Anybody can see. I'm backing my stuff up. We're not even in the Starcraft. We're not even in the Starcraft. Nobody in the Starcraft scene defended match fixers when the oh, evidence man. came out, saying that like, hey, maybe they said, let's let's say, the yeah, when the evidence came out, but there was actually movements going on. Oh, let's not look too much into this, and let's look. Into whatever happens, what? happens. What movements? Of, let's not look into this. Can you find me all of the CS:GO head people that were pointing that were saying? Like, Oh yeah, tons of cheating is going on in the CS:GO scene before the VAC ban started happening. Did this ever happen? Uh, well, uh, in, industry. In, I think industry people knew there was something going on actually. But okay, again, but you didn't. No but one all had these the people were coming out. No one saying, had the like, balls. Hey. No so one had the balls. It's like the same way that people even do with Flusha today, who is 100% fucking hacking. Much the same way people do with him. Why? Well, hold on. Give him the benefit of the doubt. The yeah. vacuuming hasn't happened yet. Hold on. Just chill. Of course, you're going to expect people to respond this way. They do it in every single community. Starcraft isn't unique there. And I don't Wait. think that once the match rate, like, how many people oh. go on to StarCraft forums right now? Life hasn't even been formally accused so, of anything. And you see let's... a lot of people saying that life is probably involved in match fixing. Yeah, like, yeah. this so idea let's... that everyone in StarCraft is defending match fixers is totally not true. Yeah, and, and, and they're all coming out and saying, you know, look, well, whatever happens, it won't affect the game. This isn't like the Brood War situation. What? Oh, people are calm. saying it Not could be it. exactly like the that. Brood War situation. What are we reading? Industry what? figures. Industry figures. I'm not talking about plebs on a subreddit. I'm talking about industry figures. The, the, I look, you can go and find this. You know that people have said this. You know people are terrified about it going the same way as Brood War. You know that. Right, and that's my I've whole point. People and this is where we get back to saying. square one. And that is that the reason people <laughs> jumped all over Thorin, and I'm talking about industry figures, industry figures. The reason people got triggered by Thorin is because they just want to defend what they've got. They just want to protect the last few glorious months, years, whatever it is of StarCraft, preserve their own interests, hopefully transition into another game in the meantime, most likely a Blizzard one, and that's what they're interested in. They're not interested in reflecting reality. And that's the that's... difference. StarCraft has an incredibly insecure community. That's my point. That and and, 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 and that is demonstrable by all the evidence that I've used. And we can demonstrable by rain. like super selective cherry picking with a lot and a lot uh, of points you, that are like you barely don't, defensible. Don't cherry pick your points to prove your arguments. No, I mean I'm, I, I've certainly no, sourced my I like arguments. Making real arguments. Sourced no, I'm not going to cherry pick. What do you mean? You, you, I think you that most of the don't cherry pick. What, okay, tell me what you think of cherry pick so far. I think that most of the statements I made are pretty broad and apply to a ton of different groups. People will have a negative reaction if you tweet lies about their game that are negative rather than having a negative reaction. But again, we, we come back to this tweeting lies about their game. There was nothing. There, there, there was nothing wrong with that article. There was nothing. No, there wasn't. There was nothing wrong with the article. There was nothing wrong with the article. 
Yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, what am I cherry pick? What do you feel like I've cherry picked? Tell me. And and I, again, I, I, right. Yeah, so again, cool. why why do people react to that tweet? I'm just repeating myself here. This is ridiculous. Why, why do people why, react to the tweet? Because the tweet made it sound like your game is dead. Let me read the tweet. Who will take Flash's place as a StarCraft II superstar? The answer: a shrinking talent pool means no one will. Hmm, why would people respond What's wrong with negatively? That? What's, what because is the wrong tweet with that? is, that's essentially a huge What's dead game that? tweet. What is wrong with that? It's a fair summary of the article. It's not it's even not a fair summary of the Oh, that's all. Come on, Rishna. You just like, broke all, all arguments the there. It's a fair summary of the article. It's oh, just... a fair summary of the article. It's not a fair summary of the article. <laughs> summary of the article. I remember this... reading that. It's a fair summary. Yeah, I did too. I read the whole fucking thing. And the article fair goes summary. on with how the, the article is essentially talking about how a shrinking tournament scene in Korea means that we might have problems getting some yeah. of these high quality players yeah. like Flash out. That's a good nuanced fair, statement. Fair, and fair summary. And oh, there's a like million other ways. Oh, right, okay. There's a, million, there's a million other ways you could have tweeted this article without essentially saying, nope. who will it, take Flash's place as a StarCraft 2 superstar? The answer is triggered, game is it triggered dead. everyone because everyone in StarCraft is fucking insecure about the fact that it might be right. That's it. I'm, okay. That's it. That's all there is to it. And again, I, you, it's, you're, it's, literally, it's, you're literally it's, saying it's, that tweet because it uses the phrase, what was it, dwindling talent pool? Because of the structure of no. sense, the answer, a shrinking talent pool means shrinking no one. Shrinking talent pool, sorry. Yeah. So that, 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 that's it. So because it, it summarizes the article. And again, you know, I don't know if you know, it's Twitter. Obviously, I know you don't have one at the moment, or maybe you do. Uh, Twitter has only a 140 character limit. Uh, it can be very hard to summarize articles, especially ones that add uh, nuance and balance. Uh, and, and a fair summary of that article is that no one will ever replace Flash because of a uh, shrinking talent pool. Fair summary. Fair how summary. about how about so, a tweet like a shrinking talent pool may mean that uh, 